psalmist said, blessed is the man whose transgression is forgiven. Amen. Whose sin is covered. And I appreciate that. Thank God we're blessed individuals tonight. Amen. And uh, you say, preacher, you don't understand. We've had some hardship this year. And uh, I could say I, I can see some of that. But God's still been good to us. And uh, he's better to us than we deserve tonight. And if we really got what we, what, what we deserve, uh, it sure wouldn't be the grace of God, I guarantee you that. But God's a long-suffering God, and he's full of compassion and mercy. Amen? And I appreciate the Lord for he's put up a lot for me. I can just be honest about it. Amen? But I appreciate, again, you being in the house of God tonight. How many looking for the Lord to move tonight? Say amen. amen. And uh, listen, I, I'm excited what the Lord uh, wants to do. And I anticipate every time I come to the house of God for the move of God. Amen. For the special singers come, whoever Brother Larry's got, uh, he might scrape up a quartet. You can't ever tell about Brother Larry. Amen. Uh, let's we all that will and able and body, let's come to the altar and pray. Uh, for the service tonight, God would just have his way. Uh, the Spirit of God would unctionize the singers and everything. We want God to receive glory and honor. And as you pray, remember your pastor. God would bless him and touch him. Amen. Pray for somebody that's lost tonight. Pray that God would speak to their heart. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Larry McCosh, if you'll lead to the throne of grace. Yes, God. Help us, O God. Yes, God. Bless your good and holy and righteous name. Oh, God, tonight. Lord, may you should kind of go out for the house tonight. God, I pray, Lord, I need you. God, even before I leave you, God, I need you. God, I'm asking the Lord to pay for the God, you might receive honor and glory to me. God, we pray, oh Lord, that I ask that word to you. God, may you touch the Heavenly Father and the Spirit to the nation. God, we pray for those God, God, may you see them, God, may you heal them. God, may you have all things to the nation. Father, I pray tonight, God, may you be in Jesus' name. Oh God, may you touch them tonight. May you study them. God, may you see them. God, may you draw them. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Thank you, Lord, for the precious blood that the Lord has come down. Thank you, Lord, for the service now. God, may you help her. May you encourage her. God, these lights on us. Let us run the race of patience. Looking unto Jesus, the author of sin, inspired faith. God, help us, Lord, when we find the Lord is good to be in the heart of the day. We love you, Lord, and give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name. Some go.
Nature sings an awesome song of praise. Even the heavens declare his glory. So I will stand before you and proclaim. Yes, I know.
praise the Lord. I'm glad God knows all about us. Amen. 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 Knows our name, knows our address, oh, yeah. and knows what we need. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. I'm glad you saved tonight. Amen. Say amen. amen. Appreciate the good word of God. Appreciate the presence of the Lord. Appreciate good singing. Amen. Amen. I can't sing a lick, so all of it's good to me. <laughs> amen. So I appreciate it. Appreciate the goodness of God, all that he's done for us. If you have your Bible tonight, the Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew chapter number 2. Just couldn't get away from this. We tried every way in the world, and Lord just wouldn't let us stagger off of it, so we feel like it's needful. And you pray for us, ask God to touch us and help us. I uh, don't want to be a hindrance to nobody, but certainly want to be a help to you. We love the church, and we appreciate you and appreciate all that you've done for us. And uh, glad we got a place that we can stop in and worship, amen. Out in the middle of nowhere, I know some people that love God, amen. I appreciate you. You mean a lot to us. You're special to us, and I appreciate you. I got you now, brother, amen. And uh, so I appreciate you, everything you've done for us. You've been good to my family. You've loved on us, and you've took care of us, amen. Gospel of Matthew Chapter number two, if you're able and willing, stand with us for the reading of the Word of God. And I want to read a few verses and try to be a help to you in the Word of God. Very familiar text in Matthew chapter number two. If you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? You do see that in your Bible, don't you? Didn't say where's the prince of the Jews, but they said where's the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. And when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes, of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And the word of God says, And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, For thus it is written by the prophet, Thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Boy, I like that business. Amen. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, encountered of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And when, he had heard, when they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them to it came and stood over where the young child was. Verse 10 says, if you're still with me, say amen. amen. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. I like that business. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts. And here's the gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country another way. I want to draw your attention to these wise men, the Magi, whoever you want to call them tonight, and want to preach with the help of God on wisdom from the wise, from words of wisdom from the wise, some simple truths in the Word of God, but I hope they can be a help and encouragement to you in this hour. Father, we are grateful, Lord, and we're humbled, dear God, to be back in your house tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for Calvary. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus, the Son of God. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings you bestowed upon us. Now, Father, I pray, God, that you'd take and hide us in the cross. God, that you might use us for your honor and glory. God, that you might stir in the hearts and lives of your people tonight. Help us, O oh God, to be about your business. Help us, Lord, to... Magnify you and worship you in spirit and truth. I pray, Lord, tonight may you edify the church. God, may you manifest Christ. May the word of God be uh, glorified, God, through the uh, simplicity of preaching. God, I'm nothing tonight. I, without your touch, without your unction, how I desperately need you. How I need your heavenly wisdom, your touch tonight. 
Uh, Father, I dare not stand behind the sacred desk where uh, no man dare stand alone. But Father, Lord, if you'd come and God get stir our heart tonight to uh, see the simple truths of the Word of God. God, we would be reminded, Lord, of the wisdom that these men had and that seeking after you. Help us, oh God, to serve you. Help us to love you with all our heart. God, we'll never be careful to give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it all. And the church said, Amen and Amen. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. Amen. Here we see the story of these wise men. Now, we always refer to them as being three men, but really the Bible doesn't say there was three men, but we get that from where they brought the three gifts. Now, I could see that, and that's all well and fine, and don't really want really to argue about that tonight, but I am, am interested in some things uh, in the Word of God. Amen? First of all, would you agree with me and say these was wise men according to the Word of God? Amen? Uh, why was they wise? Well, we'll see that in just a few minutes, but I believe there's some wisdom that we can glean from them tonight. Uh, through the Word of God. i got three points and I'll try to get through them fast and, and won't hold you long tonight. Amen? But in the book of Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse number 7, Sol Solomon said this, being the smartest man because it asked some wisdom of God, he said, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding. Amen? Then in Proverbs 16, verse 16, he says, How much better it is to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. Amen? Then in Proverbs 19, verse number 8, He that giveth wisdom loveth his own soul, and he that keepeth understanding shall find good. Amen? And the Bible teaches us there's some things about wisdom. Amen? And tonight, I want to say you would be a fool uh, not to glean from the Scriptures some things that the Scripture teach us. It's not about just this life down here, amen? But there's some heavenly wisdom uh, more than what we have, amen? Have you ever run into some know-it-alls, amen? You can't help a know-it-all, amen? But God, I need some help tonight, amen? And from these men, I see some things in the Word of God that the Bible says that these were wise men and these men came from the east. Amen? Just looking at your Bible, the Bible simply says the word for wise men is megaos. Amen? It's mentioned in the Bible six different times. Amen? Four times in our text tonight in verse 1 and verse number 7. In two times, in verse number 16, amen? And then the word wise men, which is interpreting Magos, it, it's also mentioned in Acts chapter 18, verse 6 through 8, and it's translated a sorcerer, or one that, listen, it, listen like a witchcraft type person, and you'll find through the word of God, if you dig on this word, what the word Magos M-A-G-O-S simply means wise men. The original interpretation of that word means the wisest of the wise. Amen. I, these men had some wisdom. They I, was stargazers. Amen. I, before I go any further, I want you to understand these are not Jewish men. They are from the east. Therefore, they are Gentiles. Amen. And listen, friend, you'll find this here in the Word of God. He said, well, preacher, that makes them wicked, amen, if they're studying the stars and or astrologers, amen. Well, even if they are, are referred to as being evil, amen, I thank God we find in our text tonight they had enough sense to lay aside everything and begin to seek after Christ, amen. I'll tell you tonight, if I was lost, if I wasn't, I'd write with God, I'd just burn the blueprints on my life and come hell or high water, I'd cast my lot in the will of God and say, hey, I must find Christ, amen? And friend, you'll find it was that, listen, I believe these men were not evil men, but I believe, friend, they was knowledgeable 
of the Word of God. Amen. Matter of fact, I believe they had studied the writer of Daniel, and after the writings of Moses, even when Moses talked about the prophecy of Balaam's star. Amen. And friend, you'll find through the Word of God that, listen, this was one of the groups that came seeking after the baby. This was one of the groups of men that came to worship him. I remind you in the scripture, friend, that you'll find through the word of God, there was another group that we know that the angels appeared to when they formed that first pulpit out of a cloud and declared the good news. Amen. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And they said one to another, let us go and see this thing. Amen. And so here's these shepherds on one end of the spectrum, and here's these wise men on the other end of the spectrum. Amen. Uh, the shepherds being poor men, but yet the wise men uh, being wealthy men. You say, preacher, how do you know that? Because of the gifts that they bring. Amen. Uh, these, were, these were men that were from afar off. But yet the shepherds, on the other hand, was men from near. Amen. The shepherds were ignorant men. They were unlearned men. They was common men, kind of like me. Amen. But the wise men were uh, educated men. They was well-educated men. They was astrologers. They was scientists, if you would. Amen. Are you with me so far? Say amen. And as I said a while ago, the, the, the shepherds were Jews. And these, these wise men were Gentiles, amen? But nevertheless, one writer said, well, uh, one interpreter even said, well, uh, they had them named. And I, I don't know all the names, and I, I'm not sure about all that, but the names that he gave sounded pretty good, and I ain't going to say them tonight. It wasn't Mo Curly and Larry, amen? But I can't pronounce the names he gave, and I, I don't, I'm not real sure if that is the names tonight, but they say that each one of those wise men would, was stemmed out from the three boys of Noah. Amen? At Shem, Ham, and Japheth. You remember when Noah got off that ark? I mean, everything was destroyed. And Noah set up an ark and worshiped God. And out of his loins, Shem, Hapheth, and Jed, God multiplied and all became a nation. Amen? And friend, I just believe that's Bible tonight. But ain't amazing to me that, listen, if that's the case, how God is drawing from all ends of the spectrums all types of people to himself. Amen? Right, listen, listen, ain't that a blessing tonight? He's drawing them to himself. Amen? But notice, if you will, in verse number two, they came and this, listen to what they said. I, boy, this be a good question for us to ask. Amen. I, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Amen. I, God was drawing them to himself. And may I say, friend, simply that those, uh, that, listen, them shepherds was drawn I, by the word of God. Amen. They was drawn I, by the word of God when those angels showed up. And declared unto them the word of God. I say I agree with that, don't you? The scripture must draw you, amen? That word will speak to you, amen? And then these wise men, on the other hand, was not, listen, they, they didn't know the word of God too much, but they was drawn by creation, amen? I mean, listen, they didn't spend day in and day out studying all the scripture, but I'm telling you, friend, they studied the stars and they studied creation, amen. And according to the writer of Psalms 19, the Word of God says, listen, it talks about the handiwork of God. The firmament even shows His handiwork, amen. And the heavens declare the glory of God. And I'm telling you, friend, either way, He was drawing them amen. unto Himself, amen. And friend, you'll find through the Word of God that, listen, them angels came and I presented that, listen, they presented that baby to them shepherds as a lamb, amen? But yet to the wise men, uh, he, he couldn't present him as a lamb because they would miss it. But yet God, through that star, 
I presented his son, and that star came right over where he, I'm about to get blessed, amen. Uh, listen, stood right where he was, and Brother Tim, he presented his son as the star of David, amen. I think you'll find through the word of God that, listen, uh, he is exactly what uh, they needed him to be in order to see him, amen. And to them shepherds, for them to identify him, because them shepherds was raising the ewe lambs, amen. It was a time of season of offspring. They was in the field, not just watching over any sheep, Brother Ronnie, but praise God, they was keeping watch over the flock by night. And that flock was the offering sacrifice. Those was the temple sheep. And that's where the son of well, amen. I tell you, praise God, when that lamb stepped on the scene, there'd be no more offering for sin. There'd be no more sacrifice of goats and blood, of bulls and heifers, amen, but by his own blood. I thank God he offered eternal redemption for us all. And friend, you'll find through the word of God that listen to these, these shepherds, he presented himself as a lamb, but to the wise man, he presented himself as the star of David. I can go a step further, amen, to the woman at the well. She was thirsty, therefore, he presented himself as a drink of water in a dark place, amen. And what about to listen, what about to those that was hungry? He presented himself as the bread of life, amen. Uh, through the word of God, you'll find, listen, uh, to the lost, he presents himself as the way. What I'm saying tonight, if you'd help me preach for just a minute, everything that we need him to be, that's exactly who he shows himself to be. And so in a roundabout way, let me hymn this up. I don't know what you need tonight, but Christ is the answer. In anything you've got in your life, I don't know the situations or the avenue you set in tonight, but I'm telling you, friend, He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. He is the answer, amen. amen. And that star pointed to Him and said, that's Him, amen. And friend, you'll find through the Word of God, we'd be real wise like these men tonight. Right, listen, I'm talking about they traveled from afar, Amen. I don't know about you, amen. I come from a long ways off. Uh, Brother Ronnie, I am so far in sin. And God in His grace, I just kept drawing me to Himself, amen. I thank God I had enough sense to come to Him and gaze upon Him, amen. And these men traveled a long way. I don't know about you, but we've been thus far so far. And God's not failed a shit. But I'm telling you, I don't know how many more steps it is between here and there. But I guarantee you it's still a journey. Journey, amen. And I don't know about you, but we like the wise men. We need to come seeking something and we need to seek after him. Amen. 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 I tell you, friend, tonight, listen, they traveled and they come from afar. Amen. Ain't you glad God's not a respected person, Brother Tia? Amen. He not just for the Jew, but praise God, he's us outcast dogs, us nobodies, us off scurrying. Paul said, I, we're a nobody, and God says, hey, just come to me. Amen. I, it doesn't matter who you are or what kind of identity you got tonight. I, God says, hey, all those that come to me are no wise cast out. Amen. And you'll find through the word of God that these men was seeking after Christ. Amen. They was coming from far, but their care or the concern was this. Look at verse 2. Are you there? Say amen. amen. This is what their desire was. This is what they was concerned about. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? Boy, ain't that a good question tonight? God, give us a generation that above all things, Brother Charles, we'd come to the house of God and say, hey, I've been out on a journey and it's been a hard journey. And by the way, Brother Ronnie, I didn't come to see you, amen. But I come seeking after him tonight. And I just want to see, Brother Larry, I'm telling you, our society and our country and the neighbors around us, they're so tired of seeing me and you and so tired of hearing about everything. I just want to see him tonight. They'll never get to heaven seeing us tonight. But if they'll come seeking him, praise God, he will be found. Amen. 
God help us. I'll make it sense tonight. We'd be wise to seek after him. Amen. You're a wise individual if you'd forsake all and come seeking after him. Amen. That was their main concern. It wasn't about whether I, we are in such a, I'm just going to praise. We're in such a society when we come to church, we think it's about us and we think it's about us being recognized and us doing our part. Hey, neighbor, I got news for you. I, I heard a little colored woman the other day. I, there's a preacher went up to preach up in North Carolina into a black church. If you're going to preach a black church, you better have something. Amen. And, and she is sitting there. Pastor, man of God was there and the preacher walked in and he was going to preach that night the vision of angels. And, and he sat down on the front row. That little frail woman, I couldn't even hardly walk. And she looked at him and she said, have you got the goods? <laughs> and he said, uh, what do you mean if I got the goods? She said, have you got the goods? He said, I, I hope I got the goods. She said, okay. She said, you might want to move down just a little bit. She said, because God's given me the goods. And when the goods get to spill over, I'm going to rejoice in it. He said he got up to preach and said, what a little while she is a shouting. And said, got after over it with. He told that young lady, said, yeah, I believe I got the goods too. Amen. And God help us tonight. That listen, if we'd come seeking after Christ, and what God could do in our services, Brother Larry, if we would come with a desire to see Him tonight above all everything else, it's not that we would get recognition. It's not that our church would make a name for itself, but that we would decrease and that He might increase. If we desire to see Him, He'll show up. Amen. You'll find here it is. In the word of God that listen, they were seeking some things, amen. And by the way, the Bible says when Herod had heard the news, he was troubled. Uh, Brother Tim, you get a desire to go further with God, there's going to be some people in the church and around you in your circle that's going to be bothered because you're wanting to seek God. Amen. Now, amen, that's exactly right. Oh, Herod was bothered by it. Just go ahead and tell him, excuse me, amen. I'm going to have a fit in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I know what God's done for me and what He's brought me through and what He's bringing me to. Amen. And the Bible says, Oh, Herod was there. Notice what they was doing, friend. They had a care. And the Bible says, Look at this. They found him in Bethlehem. You know what Bethlehem means? It means the house of bread. <laughs> Heaven's loaf. Laid in the house of bread. <laughs> when the Mary brought forth her firstborn son and laid him in a manger, by the way, their culture is totally different than our culture. That manger is not a, a wooden trough with straw and hay, but even, the, even, the, even the, the place where she had him was a cave. And the manger was nothing more than a stone or a rock. And she laid them rocks was what they would feed their cattle. That's what they'd feed their livestock. How about that? <laughs> what they needed was put in the feeding trough. I tell you, praise God, does he not say, when they got there, they were satisfied with what they saw. Amen? I tell you, praise God, God satisfied me. He's filled my thirst and my soul. He's fed my soul from heaven. Amen? And the Bible says when they got there, listen, they were seeking for themselves. They needed to know for themselves. And when they got there, Brother Tim, they didn't have to ask no more questions. They saw for themselves. I'm just telling you to try God tonight. So many of us looking around to everybody else. If you just seek after Him, when you see Him, there won't be no more questions. God will show Himself. And the Bible says here it was, they was seeking Him for themselves. But may I say this and go a step further? They were seeking him, and God, in seeking him for themselves, God showed them the future. The Bible says here it was. Now, now notice this, if you would, in the Word of God. Here it was. Uh, Balaam prophesied this years ago. Moses pinned it down. He said, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. 
There shall come a star out of Jacob. How about that, bowl of beans? A star out of Jacob and a sepulcher shall rise out of Israel. Amen. I tell you, praise God. And listen, the Word of God says in Matthew 2, 2, when the wise man it was saying, hey, we've seen the star in the east, amen, and are come to worship him. I believe they fulfilled what old Balaam, they said, Balaam said, I'm going to see him one day. And the wise men said, hey, that's him we've seen for ourselves. And the Bible says they saw that star. And notice, if you would, in the word of God, ain't it amazing how God will show himself when you seek God to bless you beyond measure? God doesn't just provide for you now, but he'll give you some handfuls on purpose. And the Bible says that, listen, here it was, that star, that was a sign. And the Bible says they followed that star. But ain't it amazing that the heavens will declare the future and the glory of God? In seeing that star, that was a bright light in a dark night. But yet God said in that, and they saw this child, May I tell you, friend, the heavens is going to declare him again. In the text, the Bible says in Luke 23, 44, that there was darkness upon, there wasn't no more stars in the sky, but there was darkness upon the face of the earth. But the Bible goes on to say that the heavens is going to show his glory again. That, listen, Matthew 24, I just paraphrase, the Bible says that sun's going to turn to blood and the moon's going to turn to blood. Say amen. And the Bible's talking about that great tribulation period. And friend, if we seek God, our God will give us some knowledge for now and he'll let you on some insight for the future. And I tell you tonight, Mamma and Papa, the best thing you can do for your youngins and your grand youngins is seek God with all your heart. Say amen. And listen, God will lay out your future and God will give you some strength for the day if we would seek after him. Amen. And the Bible says here they was, these was wise men who come from afar, amen? Uh, listen, friend, here it was, they, they, they thought about what was going on, and so uh, God began to reveal himself to it. And the Bible says, notice this now, the Bible says when they got there, listen, here it was, they said, where is he born? And the story goes on, verse 10 says, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with seeing in great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down, <laughs> and fell down, and say it, and fell down, and they worshipped. They worshipped. I'm telling you, friend, their faith had now become sight. They saw it right before their very eyes. Amen. They began to worship. Amen. That word worship, I might have shared it here one time before. But it comes from a Greek word, proskunio. It means simply to lavish kisses on. It's like a little dog that uh, gets excited to see its owner. <laughs> Amen? And I may have shared it before, but I've got a great Dane dog, and I keep that thing locked up in the house when we leave so he won't eat the sheetrock off the walls. And we go home, and we walk in, and Brother Larry, that, that cage, we got him in. He's like a miniature horse. I mean, he's just shaking it. And he's about to tear it up. And the kids are running there. And he'll let out that great day. And oh, 130 pounds will jump out. Man, he'll knock you over. He's just, he's knocked two or three holes in the sheetrock downstairs. I mean, just tearing up everything. And he's a wild man. And man, he'll run over there and he'll just lay down and lick on your feet. And, and you know what he's doing? He, he's worshiping. Amen. That's what they, man, I'm telling you, friend, when we see the God, and we see the king, and I'm desiring to see him, amen. And by the way, when them wise men, it's a prophecy that all kings one day will see him, amen. Every eye shall see him, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he's God to the glory of God. That word confess simply means that we'll get to sit down, Brother Ronnie, and tell him what we really think about. Well, praise God, amen. And the Bible says these were wise men and they worshiped. And I tell you, friend, when you desire God and God shows yourself how strong and he begins to reveal some things in your life, there's going to be some worship come for us. Amen. 
Boy, we'd be wise to worship him tonight. Amen. Right, listen, that was the travel. They come, and they come with a concern, and they come with a care. Amen. I hope tonight you come, listen, not just because out of priority, but I hope you come tonight to really seek after him. Yeah. And say, God, we want your glory, and I want your guidance in my life. Amen? Amen. And there's the travel. And then next of all, we see not all the travel, but we see the treasures that they brought. Amen? And friend, the Word of God begins to talk about those treasures. And the Bible says in Matthew 2, verse 7, And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and mire. Amen? Amen? That word treasure simply means a, a storehouse, a casket, or, or a coffer, or something that, like a magazine, something that you would hold something valuable in. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the Bible goes on to talk about that, listen, it was customary for them to bring gifts. And by the way, there's another scripture that says in Psalm 72, 10, the kings of Tarshish, and of the isle shall bring presents, the king of Sheba, and Seba shall offer gifts. Maybe they had read that song. I don't know, but something moved in their heart to bring a gift and to come worship. But I thought about these treasures. And I thought about these wise men. I'm talking about wisdom. We'd be wise to seek God. Say amen. But God help us. We'd be wise when we come to him. Not only having a desire to see him, but when we come to him, this is just a simple thought, but it preached both ways. When they came and they brought them gifts, number one, they was gifts, but sometimes they'd been on a long journey, and when they got to where he was, what they'd been carrying, they unloaded. <laughs> they was treasures, they was gifts, but when they got to Jesus and laid them at his feet, Boy, that, that would help that help me if it helps nobody else. We'd be wise to take heed what they've done. God has blessed us and gave us gifts and lavished things on us, but I'm gonna tell you, friend, if we had just learned tonight how to trust what them wise men did and come before him, and when we get here to worship, if we just learn to lay our burdens at his feet and the things we carry on the journey and say, hey God, it's yours, amen. Because I'm going to tell you something, friend, God help us. In this day, we have so many toys and trinkets, our blessings have become our cursings. And nowadays, the things that we have and God's blessed us with, they now distract us from really worshiping God. Amen? I'm not saying that's the case in this story, but I'm telling you, I know where we live at. We spend our hours and our days of buying more toys and seeking after more treasure. Say amen. And I'm telling you, friend, God, that's disappointing. How to find out you go out and spend thousands of dollars on a new tractor, the top model, amen? We're so hooked on having the, the newest gadget and the newest fad, say amen. amen. That's right, friend. I'm talking about paying top dollar, ordering stuff before it even comes out. Brother Ronnie, what is use the tractor? Spend thousands of dollars, get the top notch, praise God. I'm talking about air conditioner, whole nine yards, the jukebox, got... Praise God, double twin turbo motors, say amen, four-wheel drive, got double stack chrome mufflers on it, and you get it on and you get it bought, and by the time you get it home, another model's done on the shed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen? amen? And friend, them toys and them trinkets sometimes, they become hindrances to us. And that stuff bombards us. These men had carried some things from afar. Tonight, I'm going to tell you in a sense tonight, if you're here, I'd be wise for you if you've got some stuff you're carrying just to cast them at his feet. Amen. Amen. Man, you get that load. The Bible says, cast all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Amen. Amen. Them, them, listen, they was casting their distractions on him. And all of that, but maybe the Bible says that these was treasures. Now, here's just the other opposite side of the coin. Now, you can figure out which one it is in your life. But just on the upper uh, opposite side of the coin, these was treasures. They were crowns. They was, they was gifts of offering. And the Bible says that, listen, they, they lavished them on them. I mean, listen, they, they, and maybe this is when Mary started singing that great song, My soul doth magnify the Lord. 
I don't know if that's when she sung it or not. But I'm telling you, friends, she, she watched all these things that happened to the son. And the Bible says she pondered them in her heart. Amen. Uh, God help us tonight. Listen, friend. I, I, listen. God has blessed us with some treasures. Amen? He's given us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Jesus said it's expedient that I go. And if I go away, but I'll send him unto you. And he'll be a comforter, a paraclete. One to come along and aid you or help you. And God has equipped us. And we have some gifts tonight. And I'm going to tell you, God, help us to bring our gifts and lavish them on the king. We have nothing of our own. We can't even walk the old song says without him holding our hands. Everything we've got, the breath we're breathing right now, Lord, to give glory to God. Amen. And friend, listen, these are treasures. Oh, God, help us. The Bible says, lay not up treasure on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt. And we're thieves. I hate a stinking thief. Say amen. You let, you let me catch a thief in my house and I'll shoot him with a shotgun. Say amen. Tell God he died with a chicken pox. Amen. I don't like a thief. Amen. And I'm telling you, friend, listen, these treasures, these treasures, boy, hey, listen, I, I, I don't want to do nothing for me. But both Charles, I believe when we see him face to face, <laughs> Paul said, behold, right now we behold in, through, looking through a glass, darling, but one day we shall see him face to face. <laughs> I'll tell you, friend, thank God, listen, what I do tonight, it's not because, it's not so much because I want to, but it's because I have to, Amen. It's either preach or die, Brother Larry. But I'm telling you tonight, God's been good to me. And God help us in the day that, listen, when we stand before it, I don't want to stand empty-handed, Brother Tim, and have no crowns to cast at his feet. I want to stand and say, hey, everything I've been able to do for your dear name, it all belongs to you. Amen. Amen. These are treasures. These are treasures. And the Bible says that, listen, they gave them gold and frankincense and myrrh. Amen. Yeah. I'll just say this in passing. That gold, ain't amazing God's always in the forefront. Because he knew that, that the next few verses said that Joseph was going to have to pay for a trip to go down to Egypt. Yeah. Joseph couldn't afford to go down to Egypt, so that's why they brought the gold. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, friend, listen, the Bible says these was treasures. God, help us not to get distracted in the treasures. Amen. Oh, Lord, listen. Friend, now listen, I know that we're living in a day that, listen, nowadays we're more focused, we're more focused uh, on preaching on, on people's toys and trinkets. And we're more focused on the Great Commission than we are the Great Command. And I, I don't know, this might be another rabbit, but I'm going to chase it anyhow. And us Baptists are bad about pushing on the Great Commission. And I'm all for soul winning. Say amen. Yeah, yeah. But it shouldn't take place over the Great Commandment. Right. It's all about the Great Commandment before you get the Great Commission. Yeah. What's the Great Commandment? Well, Jesus said this. The first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Say amen. Yeah, yeah. And the second's like unto it, love your neighbor as you say it. And, and Brother Charles, it's easy to come in and preach on everybody's sin. <laughs> Say amen. It's easy to come in. You don't hardly got to study no more to preach on people's stuff. But you, you study a Bible. And listen, this is where we're, we're too busy preaching on everybody's stuff rather than exalting the Savior. We're trying to change our behaviors and our attitudes and her actions, but God's not interested in If you get the heart, Brother Ronnie, you won't have to deal with their behavior. God will work on the inside and work it out. I don't know what all that's worth, but I gave it to you anyhow. Amen. And I'm telling you, friend, God, help us in this hour and this day, listen, not to get so caught up in the treasures. Amen. And listen, it all belongs to Him anyhow. Say amen. And listen, talking about, talking about these treasures, how that God has given us, listen, listen, we ought to just bring Him everything, everything we've got to His anyhow. And Paul put it this way, he said, I've kept back nothing. Well, hey, listen, 
Your life's not spent till you spend it living for the Lord. Right. Amen? Amen. Listen, I, I know people that their family, their family, Brother Ronnie, is suffering because they won't sell out to God. There's mamma and papas that, listen, they're seeing their grandchildren suffer because they, they see their sons and their daughters putting, putting things and priorities before God. Am I doing all right? Say amen. amen. These treasures have distracted us. We'd be real wise tonight. I, just to do like these wise men say, hey, God, it's yours. Amen. Get rid of some of them treasures in our life. Amen. And may I say no of that, but listen, there's the travel, there's the treasure. And here's another words of wisdom. Here's their testimony. Look at this. I saw this and hoping it would be a help to you. Here's their testimony. Notice what happened. The Bible says they fell down and they worshipped him. Yep. When they had opened their treasures... They present them the gifts, gold, frankincense, and mirrors. Verse 12 says, And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed in their own country another way. Look what it says. Being warned of God. They didn't have to get somebody to speak to God for them. <laughs> now, that they, now that they saw the Lord for themselves, Listen, these are Gentiles. They had come from afar. It's almost like a plan of salvation. God drawed them to himself. You have to be drawn before you can get saved. And the Bible says they was there and they saw him for who he was. Before you get saved, you'll have to see him and then you'll have to see yourself. Then the Bible says they worship him and they gave him everything they had. Ain't that right about it? And here's their testimony all of a sudden. And the Bible says, and God warned them. That's a type of communion. God began to fellowship with them. God began to talk to them. Amen. I praise God. I'm going to tell you, friend, it's not long after you get saved that, listen, God will begin to communicate with you. That Holy Spirit He puts on the inside of you will lead you along the trail. Say amen. And He'll guide you in all truth. Bible says, lean not to your own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge God, and He shall direct thy paths. Amen. Amen. That Holy Spirit, Brother Tim, will begin to commune with you and give you the mind of God. Amen. That's the testimony that they left and they didn't have to ask no more questions because they had God already in them. Amen. Amen. Number two, look at this here. It was the Bible says, and God warned them in the dream that they should not return to heaven. What's your Bible say? They departed into their own country another way. Number two, well, let me back back up about our testimony. We'd be wise tonight if we keep our communication open. Without communication, there's no good relationship. But Larry, my wife tonight, God, she's got her hands full with three of them. Amen. But I'm telling you, friend, listen, if I, if I go for months and don't talk to her, the relationship ain't going to be what it ought to be. We'd be wise tonight to keep the communication between us and God flowing. Amen. God desires, Brother Larry, to hear from us. And we got the attitude, and I understand God does know what we need. But Jesus even said, hey, he knows what you have need of, but God likes to hear from us. I mean, Brother Larry, don't you like it still? Uh, Stacy, she's just a little over 30. We won't mention her age because don't really know it, but we, you know, women sense about it. But don't you like it when she still calls you every now and then and says, Hey, Dad. Huh? That, that's communication. He said about every other day. Amen. <laughs> about every day. Amen. That's good communication. You know what's going on. And boy, we need that tonight. If we can learn anything from these, God, help me. Have good communication. And I'm going to tell you, there's an area in our life that all Baptists struggle with, and that's their prayer life. I was telling the men a while ago, I said, hey, I said, the women still didn't pray? Started praying? They said, yeah, praise God. They pray, they pray, they pray. I said, that's where the power's at. I said, these services mostly based on what happens downstairs. Amen. I believe that. Boy, we need good communication. Amen. But notice, let me hurry and get this, these last two and I'll be done. They was committed. They, they had a commitment. The Bible says God told them 
to depart to their own country. That was an act of obedience. The Bible says they left and they went a different direction to their own house. Is that what it says? I tell you, friend, they was committed to obeying what God told them to do. The best thing we can do as a child of God is obedience. If you want to be blessed of God, God simply just requires obedience. Paul said in Romans 12, therefore, this is the reasonable sacrifice. This is the this is your reasonable service. Amen. That, that, it's, God's not asking something too hard of us just to be obedient. Amen. And my kids is learning that the hard way. <laughs> it's either do or, or get busted. Say amen. And so God does us the same way. And God don't like to do that, but he has to. Am I helping anybody? And the word of God says here they was, they was committed Obedience is greater than sacrifice. Obedience. God just wants obedience out of us. Amen. And, and then the word of God not only says that, but, 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 but look at this. He says, and they departed to their own country another way. Amen. Listen, the Bible, the Bible simply shows me this in the word of God. They was not willing to turn the Savior back over to Herod. Turn to the book of Jude right fast. The book of Jude, that's the book right before Revelation. Revelation being the last book, the book of Jude. I hope you find it fast. Jude, verse number 3. The Bible says, Beloved, we, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it's needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus. Amen? Listen, they was already in their life, they was already contending for the faith. If there's ever an hour Brother Willis, that we need to stand for the truth. It's this hour. Amen. There's ever a day that, I, listen, you know, you know what's the weakest thing in, in, in a child of God in this area? Bless you, Lord. Usually when we have somebody, and we go to the door, we don't know how. We don't know how to refute them in the Word of God. Yeah. And I'm not being mean when I say this, but I, I'm just trying to be polite about it. But most of us are ignorant when it comes to knowing the Scripture. Therefore, when somebody gets up and, and says something out in the public place or says something at work, we, we, we don't know if it's true or not because we don't know the Scripture. But Brother Ronnie, if there's ever been a time that we as individuals need to dig in the Word of God and get it hid in our heart that we might not sin against this hour, amen. We ought to contend for the faith. Brother got Paul said, hey, he said, I have give you some things to me and hold fast to that profession of faith. Amen? Right, amen? He said, lay hold on them things that I've taught you. Yeah. Hey, we've come too far, Brother Ronnie, to give up any more ground. Yeah, yeah. If we give up any more, Brother Tim, listen, that next generation, what hope they got? That's right. We ought to contend for the faith. They was contending. They said, hey, we ain't going to just give it back to Harry. They was contending for the faith. Boy, there's an hour and a day. And listen, I'm not going to get into all that mess about the Duck Dynasty. But ain't it amazing? Ain't it amazing? Listen, and they've got beards. and I know what all that's about. Amen. And I like beards. And I used to have long hair, believe that or not. Sure did. But I'm telling you tonight, listen, we'll stand up for stuff in society. And when it comes to the Bible and the Scriptures... And when it comes to standing up for our pastor and the preachers, no, 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 listen to me. Hey, we'll join in on singing the chorus of running the route on them, amen? Yeah, they're dogs, amen. Say amen. But we'll stand up for half that crowd out there that labels it as Christianity. We'll say, oh yeah, they're right. Hey, half of us don't even know what they are. Half this stuff that's labeled God, it, God ain't a thousand miles of it. Right. 
But man, we'll fight tooth and nail and boycott. Amen. That's, but when it comes to knowing God and contending for the faith, we'll sit on our pews and we'll watch the devil steal everything we've got. Amen. Boy, if we'd be wise, we'd take some wisdom from these men. Amen. Listen, they know some things. And I know it's simple preaching. I don't know if it helps you or not. But I hope tonight that the Word of God has taught us there's some wisdom that we can gain through the Scriptures. God help us not to be wise in our own eyes. But if God would give us the wisdom. But then that's been my prayer the past few, the past few, few months. It seems like the longer I serve him, the less I know about it. And, and there's times I sit down and I think, boy, I know nothing of this. I know nothing of it. And boy, listen, it's just simple truth. We're living in a generation that thinks it's always got to be new. It's always got to be fresh. And we've we brought that into the church mentality. And we think of the preacher teaches the same scriptures over, and we've heard that one before. And, and boy, oh, so-and-so, he preached that. You'll never top that one. Hey, friend, God, help us. This Bible's not obsolete. It's not out of date. What I love about the Bible, you can read the same scripture, and God will speak something different every time. Why? Because the author of it's still alive. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. I preach what's on my heart. They're going to come get a song of invitation. Maybe you're here tonight. Listen, you need some wisdom. Maybe you need some counsel from God. I'm going to tell you what the wise men done. They sought after Jesus. God, give us a generation that's hungry and desires to see Him for ourselves. Amen. Listen, if your kids are ever going to see the glory of God, won't it just start with you, Mom, Dad? Let's go ahead and set the path for them so they can see it in their life. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for the truth of the Word of God. God, we bless your name for your goodness and your grace. God, I pray, Lord, tonight, God, you'd take the Word of God. and God, you know our heart, what we tried to bring forth. God, I pray, Lord, you'd bless it and multiply it tonight. Let it find some good soil, God, that might bring forth some fruit and be fruitful in our life. Help us, O oh God, to learn some things from these men as they traveled on this journey. Get on and glory to your name. Bless this time of invitation. We'll love you for it and we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. What page, brother? You mind God, friend. Yes, amen. God, appreciate you being here. I wonder if anybody has a word on their heart, something you want to share, maybe a testimony, anything on your heart. Anybody want to say the love of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Praise God. We appreciate you. We love you. And a Merry Christmas to everybody.
If I don't see you uh, within the next few weeks, I'll meet you in the air. Amen. I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him. Uh, all this going on, it excites me. Uh, sure, it, it burdens me because I've got lost family members, but I'm excited. Brother Willis, one day we'll go home, sit down, all the cares of life will be over. Amen. Brother Larry, lead us in one big song up there. Praise God. Wouldn't that be great? Amen. Sit around the throne day in and day out and worship the Lamb of God. Amen. Now, I appreciate the, this time of year. It's a blessing to me. But do pray for them. It, it's a difficult time. People's lost loved ones, uh, missed loved ones. And, and listen, I know there's probably some here tonight that's lost loved ones. Uh, pray for them. Pray for healing and families. Uh, pray God just bless the homes. Amen. We need some strong families. So goes the family. So goes the church. Amen. So goes the church, so goes our country and our communities. Amen. All right. If nothing else needs to be said, don't forget, uh, Sister Susan, you got the sign-up sheet. Is that it? Sign-up sheet for what you're going to bring. And uh, I know that would be a, a burden off her to get that thing filled up. And uh, no church Wednesday night. Uh, so so enjoy your family. Uh, spend time. Love on them. Amen. Uh, give them roses while they're here. Don't wait till they're dead. So love on them and uh, enjoy them. And, uh, hey, build some, start some family values. Uh, start a tradition. You say, oh, here he goes. Listen, it's good to have some traditions. Amen. And uh, so love on your family. And uh, I, I want us to be dismissed like this. If nobody else has nothing. Go around, hug somebody's neck. Tell them if you're saved. Tell them I'm going to heaven. Amen. And uh, listen, tell everybody Merry Christmas. Brother Scotty said, for the record, Merry Christmas. And uh, listen, pray for him. I miss him. I miss him. And, uh, <laughs> so I, I don't know what he's going to get her here. He liable. Uh, she, the way she's been taking care of him, poor old Scotty, he needs prayer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Hey, Amen. <laughs> she's got him so doped up, he's like a drunk man. <laughs> Amen. He's groping for the wall. <laughs> so uh, do pray for him that God just touch him and uh, I love him, Miss Susan, and the family. They've been a blessing to us and uh, just, just enjoying. And, and I love God's people. Amen. Amen. And uh, listen, that we, ought to, we ought to love them. We ought to love everybody, but we ought to especially love God's people. Amen. Amen. Pray, for, pray for Israel, that God would give them peace. Amen. Amen. That's what this Bible teaches. And God will bless you for it. Amen. Amen. So pray for them. Pray for our brother, uh, brother-in-law and sisters. They're going to be going over to Jerusalem um, in February. But they're not going as a group. They're going as individuals. So it's a little bit more dangerous. So pray for them, uh, that God would protect them and keep them safe. Remember Sister Nita. What's, what's the latest on her? Um, she'll be 14 next week. Okay. So is, is swelling, swelling still going down? Sister Vic, pray for them. Amen. Anybody else? Amen.